Let's now turn our attention to northern Tanzania, where claims of forceful eviction from the Maasai community have sparked protests in a growing fight with the government. The Maasai delegation is currently in Europe, seeking international help to stop the authorities from moving Maasai communities out of the Liondo, near the Kenyan border, and the Ngorongoro Crater Conservation Area, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Both areas are famous for high-end safari tourism, which contributes significantly to the economy. And the Tanzanian government says they must be protected. But the Maasai claim the decision to relocate them from these lands has destroyed both their lives and livelihoods. For more on this, I am now joined in the studio by Joseph Olishenge, a human rights lawyer, an activist pushing for Maasai land tenure right, and Noki Shelly, both of them from the Ngorongoro district. Hello and welcome to the program, guys. Thank you very much. Just to be clear, Naki Shelly will talk in her local language, Ma, and uh, Joseph will translate for her. Naki Shelly, let's start with you on a personal level. How does it feel losing your ancestral land? <laughs> Losing lands has so much of the implications because you lose the livelihood, you lose the life itself. You are not like uh, flying. You must depend everything on the ground. So you lose your culture, you lose your spirituality, and it affects you entirely in everything. Mm. So basically, losing land almost means losing everything. You're losing your life, life mm. entirely. Let's be clear about the way this land was lost. Was it a case of being forced out by the government or being persuaded to leave? It was a forceful removal of communities living on the lands. It was entirely that way. They never tried to hide. They come with the military and attack everyone in the lands to go. So it was not a sort of a let's speak is go tomorrow simple that way so it was a forceful removal mm. yeah that was one part of the area was it was it across but, but board both are forceful actually because one it was with guns tomorrow we don't want you here mm. and another which is the southern part the ngorongoro is they take away the service dispensaries schools everything for consecutive three years without any government coins. Mm. Then they will tell you, this is voluntary. It's not voluntary. It's a choice between a hard rock and a stone. Okay. Which the Maasai is a very serious, difficult uh, choice to make. Mm. To lose your life or to go the place you never thought of going. Okay. So, I mean, you've been fighting uh, for a while to try to make things right. What exactly are you fighting for now? We are fighting for a fight for the life of our people. And we think we have that moral obligation to fight because Maasai to, to functions and continues with the identity. They need ancestral territories. They need pastoralisms because it's the economy. Actually, to the Maasai, cows is the life, is the economy, is the culture, is the spirituality. So this is why we are fighting to make sure they get justice remaining in the ancestral lands. Okay, yeah. so to, to, to get them back to the ancestral exactly. land. So it's only fair that we get to hear the government side of it. The government is arguing that the relocation is necessary to stabilize the ecosystem and preserve the environment because the Maasai population, according to the government, is rising. Isn't that a fair argument? Not a fair argument. To, to start with the populations, population in Ngorongoro, by government on, on sources, is a population density of 10. Nationwide is 72. Maybe they could have started with other places around Korongoro. The second, if it is the interest of the animals, then maybe they could have come to the Maasai. The largest migration on earth, Maasai Mara, Serengeti, Korongoro, is in Maasai areas because Maasai knows more than anyone, more than the governments, more than the conservationists, how the conservation works. Mm. Why then are they doing that? Why they are not listening them, because they have other demands, hunting, putting the hotels, and they think tourism and hunting is synonymous to conservation. It is not. 
the different things mm. they do not understand. Yeah. As it stands, the government is not changing its mind. They are sticking to their guns. It doesn't seem like you're going to return to the ancestral land. So how optimistic are you that this fight will bring about anything positive? The government is not changing. That is a fact. But again, the choice then we are given. If you lose, we lose it. Then we lose our life, as she said. Therefore, we are not prepared to lose it. So our choice is only one is to fight to the end to get our land back. No more, no less. It's only land. It's the only thing that we know. Mm. The land to make other things functioning. And a very quick one, when you say fight, we're talking about fighting in the court or? In different things. We're not we talking physical, the... illegal, no, 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 fights. No, 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 no. We're not referring to violence. Mm. We're referring to pursuing our rights. Okay. We're in court, regional court courts, local courts, we are everywhere trying to persuade even those financing it to stop financing fortress conservations, which is ruining the life of our people. Okay. Which is not beneficial to the nature and the wildlife of us. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Joseph Olishenge, human rights lawyer and activist pushing for Maasai land tenure rights here together with Noah Kishili, all from that region. Thank you very much. For Thank you time. very much for having us here. Bye. Now, in a moment, we'll examine the government's position and the resettlements that the UN estimates will affect more than 80,000 people. One Maasai group has been moved from the Ngorongoro crater into the village of Umsumera, hundreds of kilometers away. But as you're about to see, it's not been a smooth landing. Attempting to put down roots in a new land. This isn't home for Enoch Kimai. He was moved here to Sumera from his ancestral land in Ngoro Ngoro. It's too small a patch for his cattle, so he couldn't bring them. And like many of the other Maasai relocated, he says the welcome from locals has been far from warm. I currently live in an area that used to be someone's farm. The rightful owner of the farm would not be pleased to see their land taken and given to others. They often accuse us of taking their land, but we are trying to let them understand the government brought us here and allocated these spaces to us. We didn't come from Ngoro Ngoro to seize their land. It was a government plan. Among those who've had to make room is Rahel, a mother of three whose family has lived here for 43 years. She says her 30-acre farm was recently seized unjustly, and now she faces the immense struggle of providing food for her loved ones. We don't have enough land for farming and grazing cattle, especially during the rainy season. It's causing a lot of problems and hardships for me. I haven't even been able to cultivate my land because it's been taken over by people from Ngoro Ngoro. Our living conditions have become so bad that we're practically living like wild animals. Other Sumera residents share her concerns, saying they were not consulted on how the land would be further divided. In this situation, we can see that the government has created a very flawed system for this conflict, which seems to have no end. These individuals who have come here are our relatives, but they have already turned into enemies due to the systems that the government has put in place to address this issue. But the government says it can reallocate the land because much of this area was illegally occupied in the first place and residents, old and new, will have to learn to get along. The perception that the citizens have been deprived of their land is incorrect. That land has been returned to the village for them to share and to allocate according to their needs. No one should feel entitled to own 50 acres while someone else doesn't even have three acres. But the new arrangement has left many with a bitter taste as they try to start this new chapter and learn to live this new life that no one really wanted. Now to hear government's take, we have invited His Excellency Abdallah Saleh Posse, Tanzania's ambassador to Germany. 
Hello, Ambassador. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. So the Maasai call it forced removal. How do you justify your actions? You don't forcibly remove people by giving them a house and um, 2.5 acre of land and also let them voluntarily register. So that is not forceful removal. Well, if, if we're to be clarified here, it's not all Maasai people that were taken to a new land. Some of them have literally nowhere to go. But we've spoken to some of them and they're saying they were not consulted before they were forced to move out. Not really. Um, one has to know the, the history of the whole area, I mean the, the entire history of the area, the Ngorongoro, so as a um, um, national conservation area, as a part of world heritage. The population has always been increasing. You have the increasing incidence of humans being attacked by animals and practical impossibilities of further developing the area in order to ensure that people living in the area have got equal access to health services and education and, the and essential um, uh, things to life. So as a matter of fact, consultations had started, I mean, in some other areas as far back as 2008. Um, so it is not um, um, a force, uh, a, a force um, mm. a process. And as I, I've mentioned, as we are talking now, some people are voluntarily registering themselves for the second phase of resettlement to Msomera. And okay. maybe, just to add a point, it is not the first time in Tanzania that people in a particular community have been uh, uh, resettled for purposes of um, uh, protecting maybe important sources of water or, or other um, um, e ecological I, th aspects. I think the, the argument is not really about resettling people. The, the, these are a lot of Maasai people that are saying that they were forced out. They weren't even given a choice. They didn't have a say in it. You say you spoke to some of them. There's still quite a large number of them that say they were not spoken to and now they are dealing with a lot of challenges. But you talk about conservation plans. My question is, can't you do more to make your conservation plans coexist with these communities? Why did they have to move out to make room for conservation plans? That was the idea since independence. And as a result, of course, the Maasai's were living there, or people were living in the Ngorongoro conservation area, um, were living according to certain um, regulations. The problems, those regulations were not really to their well-being because one, the land there was not theirs. So there was no right to build permanent houses. You cannot, uh, 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 ex uh, continuously build schools and hospitals because otherwise you'll get rid of the World Heritage Site. And the population is increasing. What is the practical solution, yeah, in order to make sure that the people living there also have got that equal um, opportunity to, to, to exercise other rights as other uh, citizens of the United Republic of Tanzania. So um, it is not just about Letting a person live in a particular area is about having a big picture of the future generations of all Tanzanians, mm. be it Maasai or any other tribe, who are living in such kind of a situation. Okay. But I mean, at the end of the day, unless you're saying that mm. the life that they live now, for those of them that have moved to a new um, land area or land space, they are now struggling to share resources with the locals that they met there. So they are facing some challenges. What mm. are you doing about that? Not true. That according to you, that we spoke to people that are living there, they say they are facing a challenge. So it's easy for you to say not true because you don't live there. But they say they are facing these challenges. And if you think about it, if there were locals already existing in a place, more have been added there, it's only natural that they fight for resources. Why do you say not true? You know, let me tell you that Tanzania is that country whose size of land is three times bigger than, than the size of Germany. And you've got a lot of unoccupied space, unoccupied land, yeah. So um, find um, two or, or five families, yeah, it's not saying like, um, oh, maybe if one or two might say, okay, where, how are, uh, 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 what are these strangers doing? It's not, it's not saying like, um, some people are resisting. The fact is, as we are talking now, you've got, you've, you've not heard of any commotions in Msomera region where there is new resettlement. And even now in, in Gorongoro area, conservation area, where these families are moving, for the, this week, last week, or even a week before last week, mm. you haven't heard of any commotions. And as I've said, people are voluntarily registering themselves. So if okay. there are any continuous commotion, then mm. you would have known that, okay, there is a real problem here. Mm. The fact that no more commotion going on 
I mean that some of the things I think is better also to let time uh, produce better okay. answers. I mean, you, you argue there's no commotion, but we had a report that is basically looking at people that are complaining that their lives have changed, they are struggling for resources. So again, those dealing with it or facing the challenges say there's an issue. You say there's no commotion, but they feel it. But uh, b before you go, because you're, you're definitely a very busy man and we want you, we don't want to take too much of your time. The Maasai communities insist they'll do everything to get their land back. Is there still room for negotiations? Well, in Tanzania, and that's the good thing about uh, the United Republic of Tanzania, we have the constitution, we have the um, fundamental rights enshrined in the constitutions. I mean, since 1980s, the judiciary has developed quite um, uh, uh, important jurisprudence in human rights. So if people think that their rights have been encroached, the legal mechanisms are still there. What is the most important is at the end of the day, it is important to find a practical solution. And for the government, um, it has found that in order to ensure that the masses have got the equal rights to own land, equal right to education, to health services, to development and others, it is important to resettle. Because at the end of the day, I would really like, love one day, yeah, mm -hmm. to see many more Maasai as, 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 okay, maintain their culture, cultural life, but at the same time also as bank owners or CEOs or et cetera. Yeah, because otherwise it's not that, uh, if, even if we are, we are, we are talking about um, uh, mm. maintenance of cultural life, it's not about condemning a person to live in poverty. Because that is the area now where the, the poverty okay. rate is high. The illiterate rate is more than 64%. Yeah, so it's the highest than any other place in the religion, in, in, in the region. So you, it's, it's unfair. Mm. to let things go the way they, they are. His Excellency Abdallah. There, there, there are always doubts when it comes to new things. Okay. The most important is let time also give good answers. Okay. His Excellency Abdallah Saleh Posse, Tanzania's ambassador to Germany. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks.